Dear colleagues, welcome to my hospital at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This is a white non-intumescent cataract with a denser patch in the posterior aspect of the cataract. At this moment, I do not know whether it is a posterior polar cataract or not. However, I have to take all the precautions that is taken in a posterior polar cataract. So, I have taken this case for surgery. Let us observe these surgical steps. By this time, the main incision and a side port on the left side of the main incision have been made. Now, I am going to stain the anterior capsule with triban blue dye. And now, this is a bit of adrenaline. The pupil has not dilated well, but it is adequate. However, adrenaline may help, so I have applied few drops of adrenaline. And now, the dye and the adrenaline is washed out. Yes, the pupil has dilated a little more. And now, the anterior chamber is being filled off with 2% hydroxypyl methyl cellulose. Yes, and the pupil has dilated a little more because of SPMC. And now I'm going to do capsulorexis. The anterior capsule is incised. A tag is raised. Now I use uterata forceps. Hold this tag. All the time, just lift the anterior leaf of the main incision to prevent leakage of viscoelastic substance. This is a non intermessive cataract, so we can do rexis at on go. Yes, rexis has been done. Now, in this case, I am not going to do hydro dissection, I am going to do hydro delineation. Here it is. I am going to apply fluid inside the cortical matter and it has separated the epinucleus from the nucleus. Hydro dissection has not been done. And so I am not going to rotate this nucleus. And now without rotating, how we can manage it? Let us see. The tip of the phaco handpiece is introduced. This is Oatly Cataracts 3 phaco machine. And I am in phaco 2 mode. It has gone bevel down, some superficial cortical matter is removed. Now it is made bevel up. Now the tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus and it is chopped. And the nucleus is not attempted to rotate. Now hold it on the right side and chop it. Now the free nuclear fragment is emulsified and removed. Now we hold it on the left side and emulsify and remove another fragment. By this time the nucleus is mobile, our fragments are mobile and they are hailed with a vacuum and emulsified and removed. Now I try to remove the epinucleus and at this time I can see that there is a dense white plaque with a circular band like appearance on the posterior capsule. This could be a calcified patch, I do not know. However, we have to clean the cortical matter and implant an intraocular lens. We can use ER laser and do an opening in the middle of this white patch later. At this time I do not want to do any 
posterior rexus. Cortical matter is being removed but there is a shell of epinucleus from one o'clock to seven o'clock. Have to remove that. I'm making another spot at around seven o'clock. Uh, I want to use bimanual irrigation aspiration to dislodge this epinuclear sheet. So here is epin irrigation. The aspiration goes and I'm trying to hold it but it came just piecemeal a rim of epinucleus is still hidden by the iris this happens when you don't do hydrodissection you try to manage with hydrodelineation can happen uh, epinuclear cushion, a sheet of epinucleus becomes difficult to remove. So now what I am doing is I am doing a little bit of hydro again to dislodge this epinucleus. Now I know that this is not postipolar cataract. This is just a fibrous plaque on the posterior capsule. So this hydrodation will not cause any posterior capsular rupture and now get H inject visco and lift this epinucleus yes we have to manage epinucleus in this way and now I can use Simco even I can go with the FACO probe use very low ultrasonic energy say 10% and remove this epinucleus in a very short time but however Bimanual or Simco can remove this epinucleus. Now the problem is there is a sheet of lens fibers on the posterior capsule. Yes, some more cortical matter is removed and then there is a sheet of cells and these cells are to be removed. So whenever you don't do hydrodissection this step becomes more difficult than nucleus management. Management of epinucleus and cortex becomes more challenging and more critical and arises more anxiety if hydrodissection is not done. The sheet of cells are still there. You can see that granular appearance on the posterior capsule. This is a sheet of lens epithelial cells covering the posterior capsule. Now here I am going to polish it out. Yes, I have been able to polish the inferior part. The sub-incisional part. Here I go. I go through the side port and I'm trying to This loss, these cells sticking to the posterior capsule just in front of the main incision and other parts. And I have been successful to some extent. Dear colleagues, in some cases, we cannot hurry up. We have to have extreme patience to give better result every patient puts his or her whole faith on us and we must do justice to that faith the patient may pay less money some patients will pay more money for a easy cataract and for some difficult case some patient will pay very less but in those cases we have to have more patience and we have to get another kind of satisfaction that is the jo joy of doing good work the joy of doing that 
jaw nicely. This is another kind of joy which money cannot buy. I remember a quote of Mother Teresa. He said, whatever you do, you do with full care, with full love. He said, if you can do just peeling a potato, do it with extreme care. Put your whole heart in it. Now here I go, I am implanting a hydrophobic acrylic single piece intraocular lens in the capsular bag. See how to implant it. Here the pupil is not dilated. Well, I am going through the sideboard with a Sinsky hook, keeping the antechamber formed, holding it here and placing the trailing haptic in the capsular bag. Sometimes the irrigating groove cannot push the trailing haptic into the bag, we have to take help of a Sinsky hook. And now it is fine, the posterior capsule is clean except that white circular band. At this moment I don't want to disturb it, I can find that the exact center of the pupil is not covered by the band. It is a little eccentric, so the patient will get quite good vision and we can enhance that vision by ear glazer capsulotomy at a later date, say after three months or two months. Sometimes we can do early ear depending on the situation. Now I hide it, the stroma on either side of the stab incisions. And now this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. Whatever visco is there, sticking to the cornea is removed this time. The anterior chamber is formed very nicely like this and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. This is a totally unedited surgery.